Okay, so now that we know how to make the content, let's learn how to automatically upload it, have a thumbnail associated with it, and even go as far as put it to a playlist. As always, the zap in this tutorial can be found in the description below. So if you want to add it to your own profile, you can go ahead and do it then. Now, the first thing I wanted to show y'all is essentially instead of having it, so maybe you want to have a you know unique content for you know five days out of the week, and instead of creating a zap flow for every single one of those, as we do here, it's like a 21 plus block zap flow. A simple circumvention to this is we could go ahead and create a new zap. And sadly, since Zapier doesn't allow me to share paths, I'm not allowed to share this, but I'm gonna just show you it through this video. I'm gonna just say multiple day posting. This is a really simple tutorial. You can use this and apply this to a bunch of other stuff. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and do schedule. We're gonna say every day. We're gonna continue and we're just gonna choose a time of day. So let's just say you wanna, you know, every day at 12 o'clock. We go ahead and continue. We're gonna test this. It works perfect. The next most important thing we wanna add here is a paths. So essentially what paths is, is think of it as an if else thing. So in this context though, all we would need to do is basically find the day of the week and say it exactly matches. And let's say uh, you wanna do um, a specific type of content every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. What we can do is do Monday and then we can go ahead and say, or and we do Wednesday. And then we can do another one that says or we do Friday. And from here, you would just choose the same situation here. And we're going to just say contains or we can do exactly matches. And essentially what this can do is and let's make sure we spell Wednesday correct. W E D N S D. What you'll notice is that so it will trigger every single day on every single day of the week that flow will trigger. This right here will trigger. Then it's gonna go jump into paths and be like, okay, well, does the day of the week match Wednesday, which is today? And if it does, then continue down the Zapier flow. So what we built in the previous lesson, you can go ahead and add that Zapier flow down here. Therefore, this allows you essentially to build out a path B. So maybe every Tuesday and Thursday, you want a different Zapier flow and different piece of content. So then you can then build it out there. I hope that made sense. I wanted to show you this real quick so you didn't have to basically build out, you know, five or six different Zapier flows if you want different pieces of content on this AI YouTube channel. But for now, go ahead and use this method for basically creating a social media content scheduling, uh, you know, agenda. Okay, so let's jump into the first part of this tutorial past that, which is going to be our video publisher. So we're going to hit new zap here and we're going to call this zap video publisher. And essentially the reason we need to make a video publisher and can't keep it in the same zap is that Cynthia, you know, it takes time for those videos to process. So what we need to do is do Cynthia, new video is ready. And then we're gonna continue here, continue here. I'm gonna test this trigger. And this is gonna be the video publisher for the long form content. So I'm gonna go ahead and add long here. And it found a video. Um, the callback ID is short. That's not what we're looking for here. Let's see if we can find the one that we had earlier. Yep, cooking long, perfect. So essentially that's why we made the callback ID earlier is so we can go ahead and make a Zapier specific to this type of content when publishing. So we're gonna hit continue here. We're gonna go ahead and choose the callback ID. It exactly matches cooking long. So every single time a new video is ready in Cynthia, it goes to this flow, but then it recognizes that, hey, only let cooking long callback IDs through. So we're gonna hit continue here. And then we're gonna do the first step here, which is gonna be creating a YouTube title. So in order to do so, we're gonna do ChatGPT. This is also why it's important to make sure you add a title that's relevant or description that's relevant in the Cynthia video as we're gonna call upon this for this specific use case. Went ahead and generated our prompt here. We're gonna say based on this food dish and we're gonna be able to grab the title from that video. And then we're gonna say generate the following. A YouTube title includes the dish name in it and says tutorial on how to cook it. Limit to 10 words max. Perfect. And because of the fact we're dealing with content here, we're gonna upper models to GBT4. And then we're gonna give a memory key of YT food uh, long. And then let's go ahead and see what kind of title it comes up with. Okay, there we go. So easy lamb biryani recipe. I'm probably butchering how you say that. Step-by-step -step guide cooking tutorial. From here, let's get rid of those quotations using a formatter block. So we're gonna hit formatter. We're gonna choose the event of text as we are manipulating text here. And the input or the uh, function we're gonna be doing is replace. 
Let's go ahead and input the output that we have here. Let's find the quotation marks, replace it with empty space. We're going to test that action. From there, we're going to go ahead and add a storage block. This is going to be pretty important here. So make sure you add the storage block here. Because one thing I got to point out is that currently Zapier does not allow you to access thumbnail API or playlist API. So we're going to be using a, another software for automation. But luckily for us, what we're doing is going to be completely free to use this software. So that's going to be pretty nice. So therefore, we're going to have to create this uh, you know, storage block here to grab this YouTube title. This will make more sense later on tutorial. So we're going to YouTube title. We're going to choose an event. We're going to say set value. We're going to continue, continue. We're going to do YouTube food title. And then we're going to go ahead and grab our formatted text here. We're going to continue. We're going to test that action. All right. Now we're going to add a chat GBT block again. And we're going to make sure we do conversation as always. And for this one, let's go ahead and generate a prompt. Okay. So we're going to say based on this YouTube title, let's grab the formatted title here. We're going to do parentheses and we're going to say generate the following YouTube description includes the dish name and it says the tutorial on cooking this food, max three sentences. As always, whatever the context of your niche is and the, you know, what you're trying to achieve in your niche, make sure you fill it out there. This is for this example. We're going to do food descript. And then from here, we're just going to hit continue and we're going to test this action. There we go. So we have a nice little description here. Let's go ahead and add that formatter block again in order to ensure that we're not dealing with these nuisances of uh, quotation marks. So we're going to do formatter. And all we need to do simply is add the different input here. So instead of the title, we're just looking for the description that was just made. We're going to continue here and we're going to retest this action. From here, we're going to go ahead and add our last block for this zap. We're going to do YouTube. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and use our current YouTube channel here at Web Cafe AI. Make sure to stay tuned there. We do a bunch of free resources. If you haven't already, we're going to choose English YouTube. We're going to hit continue. And we're just going to fill in these variables here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do the title as the formatted title that we just had. One thing that's very important that you add as this is going to be our way to grab the uh, correct video later on in the API for the thumbnail. We're going to go ahead and add a little uh, some type of separator and then just add some type of consistent uh, universal uh, um, type of dictation. So for our example, let's just use our channel name. We're going to say Web Cafe Cooking. And then from here, we're going to add the description that we just created uh, from this text formatter. What I would do then is in your description, you can go ahead and add even more details here. So let's go ahead and grab the storage variables that we made in our first zap and add them here. In order to do so, we're going to hit storage. Perfect. And then we're going to do a different event here and we're going to say uh, get value. Now, if you remember these, all we need to do is come down here to action and we're going to grab our ingredients. We're going to do key is ingredients. Continue, test action. And then we should be able to grab the ingredients that we made for that specific video. There we go. So what we can do then is let's go ahead and grab a, another value, which is going to be the cooking direction. So we're going to do storage again. Jump back over to that original zap. Go ahead and go to action, instructions, choose event. Let's go ahead and get value. Continue, continue. I'm going to use the key that we identified in our first zap here. And then this should be the instructions. So now what we can do is not only is the description of the video going to be dynamic, but also the ingredients. So we're going to do ingredients, semicolon, and then we're going to go grab that value that we just had there. And then we're going to go just uh, cooking instructions, semicolon, and then grab the other value that we just created there. And then from there, let's go ahead and add one last block here. Um, just for our purposes, I'm gonna add another chat GBT block. And we're gonna call this basically the purpose of this chat GBT block is we're gonna get like five, you know, uh, specific hashtags with it. So we're gonna say based on this YouTube title, semicolon parentheses. Uh, and then we can actually add another one, which is gonna be like based on this YouTube, of course, the and YouTube description. Let's go ahead and grab the description that we just formatted here. I say generate, let's say 10 hashtags, uh, 
just the hashtags no text before or after to increase SEO on YouTube all right there we're gonna go ahead and upload our model to GPT-4 and then we're just gonna do hashtag we'll just do hash food and then let's see what it looks like we may need to restructure our input so our output looks a little bit better but let's see what it looks like for now all right, perfect. That is actually what we would want. So then we can go ahead and grab the hashtags we just created there. Let's add them to the bottom of the video. And now every single one of our videos is going to have unique uh, hashtags that are specific to the topic that's being discussed here. Finally, let's go ahead and add the actual video itself. So let's make sure we do that, which is going to be temporary download URL. For now, you can choose your privacy status. I'm going to go ahead and put private. You could do automatically public, which you probably want to do. And then we can choose a time to publish, which you don't really need to do. You could add tags if you want to and whether or not to notify subscribers. I'm going to say false for now. And we have officially created our YouTube publisher. So I'm going to skip that test for now. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the next stage of this tutorial. And we're going to learn how to automatically upload a thumbnail to this YouTube video. All right, to do so, we're going to go ahead and create a news app. We're gonna call this news app thumbnail, just say thumbnail auto. You probably wanna put in brackets whatever the specific thumbnail is for whatever specific you do, uh, video. But since we're dealing with the same piece of content here, we're just gonna do thumbnail auto. And then we're gonna choose the trigger of YouTube. In here, we're gonna go ahead and say new video in channel, continue. We're gonna choose our channel here and let it say continue here. And then the channel ID is essentially, you can find that on your YouTube channel. In order to find that, all you do is simply come to your YouTube homepage here and let's just copy this right here. Jump it back over here to simply press that, continue, and then let's test it. There you go. So this is the most recent video here, not too relevant for us. So we're gonna go ahead and hit continue, but it did find a specific YouTube video that was on that channel. Now we're gonna add a filter function here. And this is why it was important that you added earlier that you know consistent or fixed piece of text on your YouTube title, as we're gonna find that right now. So we're gonna say only continue if title contains and then we had web cafe cooking obviously right now it's not going to find it because i didn't upload it but for your reference that is that little piece of title information that we put uh, on the previous zap we're going to go ahead and continue here and then we got to do a couple of stuff so we're going to add the banner bear id so we're actually going to do storage all right we're going to say get value and then if you're not sure what i'm talking about here this is when we did the storage of the banner bear id right here and essentially we use the key of cook thumb. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and we're gonna hit continue. We're gonna test this action. All right, perfect. So I was able to find the banner bear ID. That's exactly what we wanted. We're gonna add another storage variable here or storage block here. And then the purpose of this storage block is to get the YouTube uh, titles name that we're dealing with here. So we're gonna say uh, get value. And then if you remember, we made it in the previous app we just created here, which can be the YouTube title. We're gonna go ahead and grab it right here. And then we're gonna do actions, continue, and then paste it there, continue. Now this may seem a little complex. You're just like, all we need to do is upload a thumbnail. Why is this so complex? Is because we have to kind of work around Zapier's API and its limitations. It currently doesn't allow you to automatically upload thumbnails, but we still wanna do it. So we're, we basically build out this kind of, you know, work around process. So it works, it just takes a little bit extra steps. From here, now that we have the YouTube title, we can go ahead and make another block. This next block is gonna be calling banner bear here, uh, not generate banners, do banner bear. And then essentially what we're doing is we're gonna be finding the image that we just created uh, with its ID. And obviously with the earlier one, we essentially already kind of did that by having the storage there. So we're gonna continue the image ID. And then remember in that storage earlier we had, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do custom, boom. And then the ID right here or actually not the ID there, we're gonna do value because we're looking at the value of the key. Continue test action, it should be able to find that image. All right, perfect. In order to ensure that we're correct, we can go ahead and copy that. And in a new tab, as you see here, we have the thumbnail. From here, let's go ahead and add another block. And this next block is gonna be uploading the thumbnail with this specific name to our Google Drive. So I'm gonna make sure we do Google Drive 
and we're going to go ahead and change. We're going to do a event of upload file. And what's great about files is we can go ahead and name them as long as we want, which is going to be very helpful. So we're going to go ahead and choose our courses account here and I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. All right. So I went ahead and named the folder into our courses folder. And then from there, I wanted to put into the YouTube course folder. This is where we're going to be uploading the file. This is important. You obviously want to designate into a folder uh, so we can later grab this uh, image in another software. So the file that we're going to want to deal with is going to be the banner bear file, which is going to be do the image JPEG. And then on top of that, the most important part here is going to be the file name. So for us, the file name is as simple as this. We're going to grab the YouTube title. We're going to do the same separator. You want to make sure this is exactly how you, whatever you uploaded, whatever the upload title is, you want to make sure this is exact. So we're going to do web cafe cooking and then perfect. We can go ahead and test that action. And then that should automatically upload this thumbnail into this Google drive folder with that specific name. And as you see, it has great. So it has the name of the YouTube video, which is gonna be perfect as we're going to grab that in our next little automation here. Okay, so when it comes to Zapier API, that's the max we can go to when it comes to uploading the thumbnail automatically. Now we need to jump into a different type of automation software called Pipe Dream. I went ahead and linked this down below as well. What's great about this is that for our specific use case here, you're not going to pay any extra money. You can use the free version of this and still achieve what you're trying to do with the software essentially is we're going to be grabbing that file from the Google Drive and then automatically uploading it to the YouTube video that just got published on your YouTube channel. So once you make your account, you're going to come to a stage like this. We're just going to come up here to new. And essentially what we're going to be looking for is a trigger of YouTube, YouTube data API. Um, I will say that this software is not as user friendly, but this is what's going to allow us to essentially uh, do this process. We're going to choose new video and channel. And then we can go ahead and choose for me, it's English. Make sure you connect your channel here. This is how often it's going to basically search for a new video. Typically you can leave this at 15 minutes, which is fine. I'm gonna just leave it at one as we're gonna be testing a lot here. And then essentially let's grab our channel ID. As I said before, you just come back over here. This is your channel ID. And then we go ahead and paste that there. I'm gonna say create source. I'm gonna rename this to thumb automatic. All right, perfect. And then let's go ahead and build this out a little bit. So first thing we wanna add is a filter as we wanna make sure that we are dealing with the correct YouTube video. And essentially we're gonna be choosing continue execution if conditions are met. And we're gonna go ahead and choose the initial value, which is gonna be the YouTube video here. So let's make sure I load that YouTube video real quick. We're gonna say create source. All right, we're gonna go ahead and just grab one of our videos here as obviously this isn't gonna basically do the whole flow. It's gonna stop at this first part, but we're gonna be able to still build it out. And then once we do, one final swing through, you're gonna see the whole process come together. But from now, we're gonna go ahead and make sure to choose our initial value is gonna be the title of the video. And then the second value is gonna be basically that web cafe cooking. Remember that fixed variable, this is where that comes into play because now it knows that if web cafe cooking is in the title, we're gonna continue going down this flow as this thumbnail applies to that specific video. But essentially that is checking if it's in the title here, we're gonna test that. This should fail because obviously it isn't in this title. All right, so the flow would have exited in that context, that's fine. The next block I wanna add here is a delay block. Um, I like doing this because of the fact that sometimes when a new video is uploaded, I wanna give it like at least a minute or so, so that if it's trying to grab the image that's uploaded to that Google Drive, um, that it's actually been fully uploaded, if that makes sense. So we're gonna go ahead and add a delay here. We're gonna do two and then we're gonna choose minutes. All right, and you don't really need to test that. I mean, then if they, of course, it's gonna understand a delay. So we're gonna add another block here. And this is gonna be uh, a Google Drive block. Um, obviously connect your Google Drive to this software and we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and say find file. There we go here. And then here we're gonna go ahead and see what we can do. So we're gonna go ahead and add a search name. We're gonna add a drive for the search name that is going to be the title. And then in this context, it's not gonna be able to find this title, but in the context of having it where we named the specific file. So for example, let's just show you, for example, come back over here and obviously 
I'm going to go ahead and just copy this. And what you'll notice is that let's say we just do the search name is that right, it should be able to find that one file right there. There you go. I just realized that I had the wrong account connected here. I'm gonna add my courses. This is my main account. I'm gonna add my courses account so it can find that file. All right, so now my courses account is connected. Let's go ahead and try this test again. There you go, it found one file, but for the context of obviously, we don't wanna always come in here and just search it. Let's go ahead and change that back to the YouTube title. And we're gonna go ahead and add another block here. And we're gonna go ahead and say YouTube. YouTube data, and then we're gonna go ahead and say thumbnail, and this should show up, upload thumbnail, perfect. And then what we need to do here, we're gonna go ahead and choose our account. The video ID is obviously gonna be, you know, the new channel video. Let's just go ahead and do enter custom expression, and we're gonna go do video ID, and then we're gonna do file URL. Now this is important as well, is we're gonna go ahead and basically add the file URL like this. We're gonna have the link. Essentially, this is a link that is gonna be able to be downloadable. So we're gonna do that. And then we wanna make sure that we change this. So essentially, we need to add the ID of the image. And what that is in this context is this right here. So we know that that link is formatted like that every single time. So once we have found our image file, we can go ahead and just click ID here. And then let's add the second half of that little link there. And boom that should now be able to upload automatically that thumbnail to that YouTube channel. Let's go ahead and add our last step here, which is gonna be YouTube. And then this would just be playlist. And all you would need to do here is add playlist items. And then essentially from here, we would choose our account, you would choose your playlist ID, which is gonna be, you know, obviously very simple. So let's just say we're just doing mastering botbrew.io and then the video ID which you can just grab here. So I'm gonna copy that, come down here to video ID, boom. Or finally it wants to show up. Uh, we'll go ahead and do video ID here. And then all we need to do then is press deploy. And then we have now created the flow to automatically upload a thumbnail and automatically upload a playlist item. Don't worry, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you this entire thing working flawlessly. But now you've officially created the ability to automatically upload a thumbnail and add it to a playlist through this process. Okay, so let's create our final zap in today's tutorial, which is gonna be the short publisher. So we're gonna say new zap. And what's great about the short publisher is a lot of times it's just universal. So we're just gonna say short universal. So any type of short could probably go through this flow. If you have multiple types of forms of content, you can go and push your shorts through this. So we're gonna go ahead and say short universal. And we're gonna do the trigger of Cynthia as we're dealing with the AI video here. We're gonna say new video is ready, continue, and then we'll let that test this action. Add a filter block here. And then as always, you're gonna choose your callback ID, contains or exactly matches. And then let's make sure we find the right video that we labeled early, earlier, so it should be cooking short from my understanding. There we go. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our callback ID here. And we're gonna go ahead and continue, and this should work. Perfect. The next block we need to add here is Credomate. Um, so essentially Credomate is gonna be the one that allows us to automatically render this in the correct format for YouTube. And we're gonna go ahead and choose whatever we have access to right now. And we're gonna say create a single render. Continue, continue. And then I'm gonna just jump over to Creatomate real quick so you see what it looks like. In Creatomate, we can go ahead and find that in the description as well. All you wanna do is create a new render here. So we hit new, and then you wanna to go to fundamentals, and then there should be either crop with uh, resize of blur or just a regular format. This one should work sufficient. There's also just featured here, um, and you can choose your different formats, but specifically for our use case, we're just gonna be looking towards setting it up. So it's in vertical format like this. And then once you set up that render, as you see here, we'll be able to grab that into Zapier. So all we need to do is grab our shorts and templates, which is crop and resize video for us. The video is gonna be that temporary download URL. All right, perfect. So we can go ahead and uh, we don't have to do any of this. We can just add the video there. We're gonna hit continue and we don't even need to test the action. We're gonna add a new block here for ChatGPT. 
and then we're gonna go ahead and do conversation. And this is basically where we're gonna be creating the uh, title and description for our short. So we're gonna say, based on this cooking tutorial, we're gonna grab that title from the Cynthia video, generate the following shorts title, include uh, includes the dish name in it, and says tutorial on how to cook, limit the words to nine maximum. I'm gonna up my model here to GBT4, and then let's go ahead and add a memory key and see what this looks like. All right, there we go. So we have our short title. Let's add that formatter block that we know well by now. We're gonna add that formatter just to get rid of those quotations. So we're gonna say event text. We hit continue here. We're gonna do transform. We're gonna hit replace. And then obviously we're gonna to wanna to find the input that we just had there to find the quotation marks, replace them with empty space. And then from here, let's go ahead and add our YouTube block. So we can go ahead and post this YouTube short. Obviously, what you want to do is make sure that all your content for shorts are less than 60 seconds. If it isn't, it's not going to post as a short. Plus, you got to make sure you add that formatter block there as that's going to allow it to be rendered correctly. From now, we're going to go ahead and choose our English channel. We're going to hit continue here. And then we're going to go ahead and add our title, which is what we just formatted. All right, let's go ahead and let this work out. All right, so we added our formatted title. What I suggest you to do is add some fixed hashtags here, such as cooking or whatever is in relevant to your niche. Refer to older tutorials on what hashtags fit you best, but add some fixed hashtags here as you want to make sure to start establishing authority in your niche. So I'm going to just do hashtag cooking. And then typically for YouTube short descriptions, they're not too important. So what I usually do is just do subscribe for more. And then if you have any relevant links, you can go ahead and add them there. But for now, we're just going to have the simple uh, description of subscribe for more. Obviously, our title is not going to be the Cynthia title. It's going to be the fully rendered version. So let's go ahead and render it real quick. In order to do so, I'm just going to come up here and hit test action. Once that has tested the action here, we'll be able to grab the video straight from this and we're going to be able to do the uh, URL, I believe. And then once we have that, and once you've uploaded the URL, you can choose your privacy status. So I'm just do private for now. You can add tags if you want and you can notify subscribers. But for now, you have officially set up the short universal. So anytime you upload a piece of content, it will also get this nice little short saying, hey people, go check out this video that we just created. This is a nice way to you know leverage uh, YouTube's platform to post in different types of content to get the most amount of audience attraction. Okay, so I'm going to start publishing all of these different zaps here and we're going to connect the entire cake here and let's see what it comes up to be. All right, so in order to ensure that it just posts manually, I'm going to change this trigger real quick to Basecamp. Basecamp is a CRM, but I use it sometimes just to manually push out videos, which may be useful to you if you want to just kind of push out a lot of content at once. So I'm going to just do the trigger of new to do and then you'll see what that kind of looks like over on my big uh, Basecamp backend. So it is live. Now we have it. So basically when I make a new to do in Basecamp, it will trigger the entire flow to build out that content that we just created in that earlier lesson. But for now, we have three zaps active. We have the AI YouTube channel. This is what's going to create the content. We have the short universal. So when the content is ready, they'll post it as a short. And then we have the thumbnail auto, which will essentially push this out so that when the YouTube video is uploaded, it will automatically have a thumbnail as well. And lastly, the last one I need to activate is going to be the video publisher for long so that when the video is ready in the long form of the content that it automatically publishes. All right, so now that all these dots are connected, this is going to be the manual trigger. Typically, you would just do the scheduler. So at 12 p.m., it would automatically do what I'm about to do right here. But I want to manually trigger it so I can just show you the entire process and how it's interconnected. So let's just go ahead and put in the simple word of go. And let's see what Zapier can do with YouTube. Okay, to start off the first stage of our flow that kicks off everything is going to be our AI YouTube channel. What we got to do is we can come over here to history and we'll be able to see if it's active. There we go. It is playing and you can obviously watch this live if you choose to do so. But let's go ahead and let it play out the first stage of this new automation. Scampi Luguini. Pretty interesting stuff. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> All right, perfect. So as you see here, it is success. So the next step in this flow was it was going to jump the videos over to Cynthia. And as you see here, they've already generated for me and we have our short version and our long version. And before we even jump over to YouTube to see what that would look like, let's jump back a little bit and make sure that our other flows are working correctly. So the first flow I want to check here is going to be the uh, short version. 
All right, so let's jump over to Short Universal. If we went ahead and hit History here, all right, perfect. It was success, and obviously we're gonna have a waiting here because the filter obviously was triggered for the long form, but it was success for that short version. Let's go ahead and see how the long version publisher is going. So we're going to go ahead and hit history here. And as you see, there is success as well. Perfect. So both have worked effectively here. And then the final thing we should check here is the thumbnail. But first, let's jump over to YouTube. All right. As you see, we have both versions uploaded. That's really good stuff here. I have it as private right now, but I'm going to go ahead and change this to unlisted. And I'm going to have this uh, down below in the description so you can go ahead and watch these live on the YouTube channel. But as you see here, if I want my little pencil mark here, we got our AI generated title with our description just for the short version. Remember, we just put subscribe for more. If we jump over to the long form content, we got the ingredients put in there. We got the cooking instructions. We have the hashtag specific to the dish we are cooking here. Then we have the AI generated description, the AI generated title. And then finally we would need to have the playlist and thumbnail uploaded. So we're gonna have to wait a little bit more time to see that come up as well. All right, perfect. As you see over there, it automatically uploaded the thumbnail as well and we are good to go. And if you had a, a specific playlist you wanted to add as well, you could have had that automatically put into a playlist on top of that. So maybe in this context, you would have a playlist for overall cooking videos for specific recipes. Congratulations, you have officially connected all the dots. We have officially created a flow that is specific for creating the content. Now we have automatically uploaded a thumbnail, uploaded to a playlist, uploaded AI generated titles and descriptions and so on. Now you see how it's all interconnected and how we can use it in our YouTube AI automated channel today. As always, all the Zapiers can be found below in the description. If you have any issues running this, Go ahead and leave some comments on this video, but without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Welcome to the next lesson here. We're going to essentially show you here today how to take any of the content you produce and generate it in any type of language, such as German, Spanish, Korean, and so on. This can be a powerful tool because maybe you want to launch multiple YouTube channels on the same niche, but provide it in different languages, therefore having a broader reach on the audience that you can gather and get subscribed to. As always, you can find these zap down below, but we're going to be jumping through how to do this in today's video. Lucky for us to do this process is actually a lot more simple than you would think. All we need to do is take our original flow. So we can take our YouTube channel here and I'm just going to go ahead and say duplicate. And then we just need to change a little bit of the fine tuning on the initial prompts and we'll be able to achieve a different language channel. And for today's tutorial, we're just going to go, do, go ahead, if I can speak, we're going to go ahead and just rename it to a YouTube channel. We're going to say German, semi bracket, so it knows that the type of content that's being produced here is going to be German oriented content. And then all we need to do, surprising enough, since we've already fine tuned the chat and we understand that every single one of these outputs is reliable, all you need to do to every single one of your GBT blocks is add a parameter here called language and we're going to call it German. And what you'll notice is by doing something as simple as that and hitting continue and then retesting the action, the output will be in German. So as you see here, we got uh, Glula Supa, which honestly I probably butchered. Over here, just Google Translate, put in German here, and then Gula Soup is the food item it chose for this specific video. From here, all you need to do is add that little small parameter there to every single one of the GPT blocks, and you will now officially create a content piece that is gonna be in German. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to every single one of these blocks here and I'm gonna add the context that we want this in German. And then on top of that, we're gonna go ahead and jump over to Cynthia to make sure that our template can handle German. All right, so I went ahead and updated all these GBT blocks to German. I'm gonna hit publish here. And then if you have any fixed text, such as in the title or the description, make sure you update that with the correct language that you want to produce here. So now this entire video is formatted out to be for German. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for Cynthia. In order to do so, all we need to do is take the template we already created, which would be the cooking food template. And we're gonna go ahead and hit duplicate. And then all we would need to do is add a little square brackets for our reference that, hey, this is the German version of the template. And then what you need to do here essentially is instead of English US, you're gonna put German. And we could do apply to all female voice avatars and then this should in theory. So sometimes it doesn't work perfectly. So it seems like in this context, I'm going to go ahead and have to add German here as well. So let me go ahead and add this to every single one of the avatars here. All right. I went ahead and added it to all the avatars here. And here's what's great. Basically all the variable text 
that you see here and all the variable inputs for voice, they're now going to be in German because that's essentially the data that we're pushing forward to this template. The only other thing you need to start changing is going to be the fixed text like you see here, which are in English. You'd want to make that into German as obviously this is going to be a German oriented video. That's always great. But for now, you have officially connected a German run zap for German content to a German template by doing these simple steps. That's all it really takes to make a different language channel for AI automation. Now you would just need to build out the previous zaps that you saw, tailor them for German and tailor everything around the templates for German and Cynthia and so on. Obviously you can choose any language here. It could be Japanese, Hindi and so on. But for today's video, we just went over the example of the context if it was a German video. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video.